Oh, hey there. Of course it's you joining me again for another episode of the Out of Spec podcast because you're smart and you have good ideas and you, uh, you, you watch and you listen to the right podcast. And we're going to talk about some more electric news today, specifically about Toyota and IANA. Toyota, the automaker, of course, and IANA, the group of automakers that have come together to form an LLC to build out a public DC fast charging network for all of their EV drivers into the future. They're supposed to have their first sites or site up in 2024. So we'll see. Let's get into the details of Toyota, a notoriously electric hesitant automaker joining IANA and beyond. Let's plug in. This episode is made possible by the support we get from Fort Collins Kia. If you are in the market for any electric Kia, not only do they never add market adjustments, they will deliver your car to you anywhere in the 48 contiguous states for out-of-spec viewers. More information in the link in the show notes. We've seen a lot of different approaches from a lot of different automakers. We've gotten to see, luckily, different models and different designs from each automaker, seeing what they're able to do so far, how they improve over time, but it missed this electric revolution of sorts. Toyota, one of the world's leading car manufacturers, has definitely taken a different route. They have focused on generally other low emission and zero emission technologies, including that of hydrogen. They do offer the BZ4X currently. They offered, you know, the Toyota RAV4 in the past. They have the hybrid Toyota Prius, the Toyota Prime. But the BZ4X is their only battery electric vehicle, and this car has gotten mixed reception, mainly due to the abysmal charging speeds and charging experience. Kyle, when he tested the BZ4X, found that it took an hour to go from 10% to 80%. Additionally, the car has these strange charging limits that make sense if you're thinking about battery health, I guess, but they limit the number of times within a certain time period that you can DC fast charge your car. Bummer. If it's my car, let me charge it, even though I have listened to out of spec podcasts and watch out of spec media and know the right kind of charging behavior, fast charging behavior for my EV. But of course, anyways, moving on. It is an all wheel drive and they have actually, they did have the best year of sales in June of this year. So just last month and in 2024, they have sold 9,600, no, 9,468 of these in this year so far. But there's one thing that they really haven't done at measurable scale in any sense, and that is US EV charging infrastructure. Many automakers have announced how they are going to subsidize, support, or even build out public EV fast charging infrastructure to support their EV drivers in North America. Though they have had partnerships with ChargePoint operators like ChargePoint and EVgo offering credits and access to the network and also support through at-home installation of your EVSE, Toyota has not until now joined a movement or a mission to install EV fast chargers for the public use in the U.S. So now they also plan to offer, not as of now, this is already announced, but they also plan to offer other battery electric vehicles in the future and even have production in the U.S. Toyota announced last June their plans to begin producing an electric SUV at their plant in Kentucky by 2025, which is their first, would be their first EV factory in the U.S. And they also have plans to produce EVs at their Toyota manufacturing plant in Indiana. So what about IANA? And yes, that is the way that you say it. I got the insider uh, confirmation that it is IANA, like an ion buzz, 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 buzzing around. So IANA is a charging network that was formed, and it's technically an LLC, so IANA LLC. So it's not the actual automakers that are coming together to build out this network per se. There's a team in charge of IANA. So IANA LLC is a limited liability company that was formed by BMW, GM, Honda, Hyundai, Kia, Mercedes-Benz, and Stellantis originally. Now Toyota is joining that group that are going to build out by 2030, 30,000 charge points, and they have planned for these to have amenities, restrooms, food, retail, to be in convenient locations, to have digital integration and great customer service. So you're going to be able to, apparently, from what they say, uh, work with participating automakers to have in-vehicle and in-app experiences, including reservations, intelligent route planning and navigation, payment applications, transparent energy management, and other features. And their CEO is Seth Cutler. He comes from 
EV Connect most recently and Electrify America in their early phase. He was uh, le a lead in engineering and orchestrating the development and implementation of high power charging network as chief engineer at Electrify America. Okay, so that's what they're joining. Uh, I will remind you that IANA has not had any chargers go public yet. It, they say by the end of this year. I would love to know when that happens, Ayana. If you're listening, let me know. would love to be there for that. So now we have the news that Toyota is joining these seven other automakers as an investor and founding partner in Ayana to support the development of high-powered EV charging network infrastructure across North America. Okay, so that means another step towards supporting their battery electric vehicle customers, but also likely this means that they're going to have more customers on the road to support. At least that is their plan with the production, with this investment and movement into the EV charging infrastructure of North America. Ted Ogawa, the CEO of Toyota Motor North America, which is a tongue twister, try to say that three times fast. He emphasized that this move will boost adoption of battery electric vehicles. That's a whole idea and enhance customer experience, which would also boost sales, of course. It's it's right there written in the words that it does take automakers stepping into this industry and coming even together, perhaps, to create the, the public EV fast charging infrastructure that we need in America that EV drivers deserve to access. That works. That is where we need it to be. And that is also put up in a timely manner. We have people adopting EVs and we will always need the infrastructure and the resources. But of course, that starts to involve utilities and states and local and federal governments when it comes to energy and our grid, which has been working one way for a long time and is now having another new pressure put on it from electric vehicle charging infrastructure. Perhaps, I'm wondering, these automakers coming together might have very heavy sway when it comes to working with utilities. Of course, all across the U.S., utilities is is uh, complicated. And there's, there's many different forms of the ways that utilities run and different utilities running different regions across the U.S. and then consider Canada. There's a lot of work to do, but I do hear consistently about how it takes time, that utilities is one big part, and then it's the folks that are trying to get the chargers up and the utilities, of course, have to get them power. So I do wonder about this, but I want to know also what you think Toyota about Toyota's move here. Why do you think they decided to invest in IANA? They said it themselves. How do you feel about that? Despite it's a past, it's past of kind of apparent skepticism towards EVs, or at least not super both feed in uh, the electric movement. Is IANA the new bandwagon? Will we see most automakers do this? Like we saw the North American charging standard announcements come out throughout last year and this year. The North American charging standard was a proven technology that is just works. It just works. IANA, not proven yet. I wonder what they have going on behind the scenes. Is charging infrastructure the bottleneck of EV adoption in the US? If there is a bottleneck, let me know what you think. Do you think this will help? Hope you enjoyed that. Hope you learned something new. I did. Thank you for tuning in for another episode of the Autospec Podcast. Drive safe, stay charged, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. If you're tuning in on YouTube, you're lucky because you get to see Rafiki's little, little feet. He is napping. Okay, anyways, back to Toyota.